I call Dr. Cam Coulter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity to take a call on this bill. And uh, look, I just want to acknowledge the, uh, the, the nature of the Select Committee and the opposition have made it clear that they oppose this bill, but I do want to acknowledge the fact that they cooperated to allow the amendments that are contained within this legislation to be reported back to the House, and that, that is appreciated. So the, the background on this bill is such that the government reviewed industry training over 2011 to 2012, and this review found changes were needed to ensure the industry training system is well connected to industry with high employer buy-in, is educationally sound and is coherent with the wider tertiary system. It also has to deliver value for money for employers and the government. Now, the bill makes the amendments required to implement the findings of this review. And I notice that some of them are opposed by the opposition. I will come back to that. The main provisions of the, uh, of the bill will be that it will establish a comprehensive apprenticeship system that provides the same level of support to all apprentices, regardless of their age. And I think that's a crucial, a crucial component of this bill, and one that I think we all uh, have buy-in across the committee. It focuses industry training organisations on two key functions, setting school standards for the industries and arranging training. It clarifies the functions and powers of the NZQA and in relation to ITOs, and includes criteria relating to quality assurance in the process by which responsible minister recognise an organisation as an ITO. Now we heard from the minister, uh, from the pre previous speaker, uh, Grant Robinson, about some of the concerns that the opposition hold, and they ex members opposite expressed concern, for instance, about the provisions in the bill making it clear that non-ITOs can receive funding for industry training and apprenticeship training. Now, some submitters contended that funding non-ITOs risks fragmenting the industry training sector and will lead to the funding of training that is solely to an employer's benefit. Submitters were also concerned that non-ITOs did not appear to be subject to the same quality assurance requirements as ITOs. In my view, these concerns are misplaced. Allowing non-ITOs to be funded for arranging training and apprenticeship training activities will strengthen the incentive for ITOs to provide excellent service to employers and trainees. The review of industry training in 2011 found that a significant number of employers thought their ITO did a poor job. Now, I understand that's a couple of years ago and there have been changes since. But having this option available as an alternative for employers will encourage ITOs to provide quality service to their employee clients at all times. Second, I would be surprised if many employers actually take up this option for their apprenticeship training in practice. Only $10 million, I say again, only $10 million of funding for non-ITOs is available in each of 2014 and 2015, about 5.5 per cent of total funding for industry training and, it is, and apprenticeships. It's worth remembering that participating employers must have at least 40 trainees each year, and the programmes and qualifications that are eligible for industry training funding are the same for ITOs and non-ITOs. Finally, the monitoring and assessing of non-ITO arrangements for training will have to be acceptable to the NZQA. Furthermore, the funding determination specifies that in order to receive funding, non-ITOs and ITOs must ensure any programme in which a trainee is enrolled meets the NZQA's quality assurance requirements. In practice, as a matter of policy, the government only funds industry training that leads to transferable qualifications for the employee. That policy will apply to non-ITOs in the same way as it applies to ITOs. There will be a level playing field. I commend this bill to the House. No further speakers? Um, I'm going to call... Um, all right. I'm calling Tracy Martin. Speaker? For a moment there, I thought the, uh, the whole conversation about this very important bill was going to draw to a very rapid close. So I appreciate the call. Thank you very much.